Right, this is the package of stuff that I got from Shropshire Classic Bikes. It's I'm gonna in the garage doing a, a conversion kit. I've got my uh, my Triumph Bonneville T140E, which is actually at some time in its life being converted into a T140V style from its original. But it is a beautiful 750 Bonneville, and um, it, unfortunately I'm getting a bit ancient, so uh, I, I I struggle to start the thing with the Kickstarter. So I I decided to go for uh, the electric start kit um, sold by Shropshire Classic Motorcycles, and uh, Paul from there has been very helpful. I had a, Good chat with him, and um, so uh, I'm just unboxing it, having a look at what I got, and uh, it comes with got two white boxes there, and and a brown box and a blue box, all inside a big brown box. This is a uh, this is the starter motor itself, and underneath that there's a brown box with all the bits and pieces in. There's a white box that has the belt drive in and another uh, white box that has the primary chain case in. I've also splashed out on a 7 plate conversion kit from Norman Hyde for the clutch. While I've got all the primary drive apart I thought I might as well do the clutch as well. So uh, we'll see how we go with that. Okay, um, I've started by, uh, I just took the gear, gear selector lever off of the uh, the primary chain case because the whole of the primary drive's got to come off. So the next is the, going to be the foot peg. I'll take that off and then get that get the primary chain case off and see what we got inside of drain all the oil out and stuff. Because uh, it's going to be converted to belt drive. The belt drive runs dry and um, it won't need oil in there. So uh, get all that out, clean it all up, take it, take all the uh, bits and pieces out, and we'll see where we go from there. Right, as you see now, I've uh, removed the uh, clutch basket and the crankshaft's uh, sprocket. Well, on, there's the, uh, the primary drive assembly on there with the, the pullers still in place. So you, there's, a, there's actually proper pullers for pulling both those things off, so uh, it's best to get the proper kit. The gearbox uh, crossover shaft pulls in and out, and you can feel there's a there's actually a, a a keyway that it latches into there that positions it in the correct position. Um, next, I'm gonna have to remove the chain tensioner to get at the little breather holes in that's behind it. I think so. Uh, I'm gonna have to take that circular backing plate off of there um, off the back of the primary chain case uh, they're slot head screws and they ain't moving so that's gonna probably be an impact driver job I hope I don't have to drill them out it's gonna be horrible um, the heads are going on them as well because uh, they don't like to be moved um, I was struggling to see the three holes that I've got to block I think uh, there you go. These these tiny little holes, they supply rivets to 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 go in there and block those. They're so small I couldn't see them at first. I thought there weren't any, but uh, yeah, they're they're there. And uh, up the top here, there was a a steel plate um, covering this section, which would have been in the way of the. Um, the uh, hole drilling that's going to come at some point. Um, there was it was held on by a screw at this end uh, there, and the, the the hole that the cable from the alternator goes through. There was a tube bolted into there, and that was also holding the plate on. Once I'd taken that off, the plate came off easily. So that's that part done. Right, uh, that is the new oil seal that has to go in the uh, 
into the uh, crankcase there and that hole. Um, got some uh, Loctite 641 bearing seal, so that will put some of that around the outside. And then I've got a lump of wood here, which I'm going to use to drift it into place. And we'll see how that goes. I've already um, put the three rivets that were provided into the little tiny breather holes in the crankcase. Um, they were a little bit fiddly to get in. Well, I've got a very small hammer, which I managed to knock them home with. Um, got them in eventually. So that's that bit done. Right, I eventually got the uh, clutch backing plate and oil seal off. Uh, got the six screws out with the help of an impact screwdriver and I had to use a Dremel with a diamond tip on it in order to uh, enlarge the grooves on the screw heads a bit so that the impact driver could get a bit of purchase on it. But uh, then getting the plate off was actually quite difficult because you see this surface is all this horrible old hematite remains on there or glue or whatever it was it was stuck on with something pretty tightly and uh, it took a few wax and a screwdriver behind it to lever it off so uh, it was on there pretty tight right now i've got to clean up that all that uh, horrible surface around there and uh, get the new plate on there so we will uh, do that now i think Right, that's the uh, surface cleaned up a bit with uh, the old uh, trusty Dremel with the old wire brush on the end. <laughs> and uh, that's not too bad. It had a few like lumps and bumps. Looks like it's been off before and uh, been gouged up a bit. But um, yeah, it's, about, it's, uh, it's suitable now, I think, for attaching the, uh, the new plate. Right. That's a new uh, clutch back plate there, and a new set of screws, thankfully. The good heads, which would be great. And uh, new gasket set, I got that come out of a complete gasket set that I bought, so that's that. Um, and a bit of blue Hylomar to, to fix the gasket on with. So we'll stick that on now. Right, there's the new gasket on, and I've uh, got a bit of Hylomar around the new plate as well and we, we offer that up to the uh... there we go and I have to put the phone down to line it up properly I'll get the screws in and that's that new plate well, that's the the new plate is on and uh, got the Decent screwdriver. Right, the new plate's on and screws are in. They only give you just enough, so don't drop them and lose them, which I'm kind of prone to do. It's really difficult finding the screw heads when you've got a phone in your hand. I'll do it with a bigger screwdriver than that. Anyway, anyway I'll, I'll get all the screws in and tightened on. And I'll, I'll, there we go. That's a new, nice new shiny plate on. And all the screws are in and tightened down. So I'm really quite pleased with that. Looks quite nice and shiny. Show me it'll all be hidden. But uh, it'd be nice to have a, a glass primary chain case cover so you can see all this inside. But uh, oh well. But the new one is quite shiny. So. But I, next I've got to get the... Um, the oil seal in there and drift that in so I'll go and get that and then we can uh, have a look at that right this is the new uh, crankcase oil seal you see it's got that's the inside and that's the outside so we'll have to stick some uh, sealing compound um, the uh, Loctite uh, 641 around the outside and uh, and then drift that into place on the on the uh, on the engine crankshaft. It, it should slide into there. I'm hopeful that it will. So we'll see how it goes. Right, there's the uh, the oil seal in place. 
drifted it in. It went in quite easily with me trusty mallet and a length of wood. And so I didn't damage anything and just like going round it, tapping it and uh, letting it slide in as uh, gracefully as it wanted to. And uh, yeah, it's all nice and flush now, so I'm quite pleased that it's all gone in good. So here we go. Right, I've uh, put the original Woodruff key back in the, the clutch, the gearbox main shaft. And uh, this is the new clutch centre. You can see the keyway in there for the Woodruff key. And look at the direction of the taper. You see the wide end is actually towards the camera at the moment. So that's the end that goes on the thing on the shaft first. So if you put that on there, and it, I've, I've angled the, I've angled the wood woodruff key a little bit so that it's got a little bit of tilt on it, so that it will slide into the thing easier. So then you, you can locate that on there, and you can feel it goes on because the taper's there. So I'll just get something to bit of wood or something to drift that on there, so it's nice and firm on the on the gearbox main shaft. Now uh, to get that on there. Uh, nice big socket and uh, whack that with a mallet and that just drifted it on on quite easily really so I see these, these threads on the end of the gearbox main shaft need a bit of cleaning up there's some copper grease someone's put on there in the past but there's a bit of gunk in those threads so I'll just get a little wire brush and clean those up a little I've uh, removed the uh, front plate of the uh, the uh, front drive pulley, belt drive pulley. Um, this is the like guide plate for the belt. Uh, it was fixed on with two Allen screws, and uh, they were pretty tricky to get on, uh, get out rather. So what I did, I drifted the pulley onto the, the main crankshaft end, onto the, the there's the splines round here, six splines, and and it fitted on there quite nicely. Drifted it on, and then I could get some purchase because of on the engine I could get a decent wrench on there and get these screws out. They were fixed in with some kind of lock tight thread lock thing that really made them difficult to get out. But they they came out eventually. Now I've got the uh, the guide ring off, and uh, that that's essential in order because you won't be able to get the belt on if you don't take this off. So um, that's that little job done, and that that pulley is now on there nice and nice and firmly so it's coming along um i'm actually waiting for the hole cutter now to arrive from shropshire classics because they had to get a new batch made i think so they get they buy the tube in and make their own because there isn't one on the market long enough to cut through this big depth of metal so it will it will cut a section out of the uh, chain case uh, here for the starter motor shaft to come through and drive onto the, the clutch uh, pulley there so I'll show you all that when it gets assembled and uh, I think really next job now and I've got the clutch center on I've got the front pulley on I just need to wait for the hole saw to arrive and I can get on with that then and it won't be much longer after that before I can get it all assembled. So I think progress is looking good. This is a new um, wider uh, gearbox crossover shaft because this has to clear the clutch. Unfortunately, when I unwrapped it, it was pretty rusty. So I had to spend some time cleaning all that up and uh, stuck a bit. It's, it's quite nice now. Uh, I've put a bit of oil on it and uh, so hopefully that should uh, do nicely now. It's got a nice nice good spline on the end for the, the gear changer so uh, that's uh, looking good. Right I'm uh, going to fit this uh, hole drilling guide onto the, the primary chain case. I've got to tap it Tap this onto the little. It's got a little tube in that hole. It's a, this has got a, a a big hole on this side and a small hole on this side, and it says this side out, side out. So it is quite self-explanatory how it goes on. So 
I'm just going to tap that into place on, over the little tube that's in the primary chain case and uh, and get the screws in, get that on. Right, this is the the hole cutter. When I got it, it seemed a bit bit too big to fit in the hole in the hole cutting guide. So it's going to be interesting how that pans out. I presume that it uh, once it's got a bite into it, it will get a lead in and uh, and hopefully hold hold it all nicely in place. I'll put a load of oil in there and stuff so that it, it's well lubricated. What I might do is get a wire brush and take some of the paint off of that to start with. Perhaps it will fit a bit better then. We'll, we'll see, see what happens. Okay. All right, as you can see, I'm like part way through there. Um, the cutter not fitting in the template was a bit of an issue. Eventually, it cut its own way into the template, but it's nearly burnt out my drill in the process because uh, it kept sticking and it was, it was not good. Um, so I think uh, I'll have to give Paul a bell about that one at Shropshire Classics and say, like, just make sure that the, the template fits the hole cutters. But So I'm part of the way through now, so got to carry on and see how we get on. It's like uh, I, I, I dip the I, I, I dip the cutter in some oil. Now that that's the general idea of what we're doing here, but I need both hands for it, so I'm gonna let go of the phone. Right, it's uh, made out of a bloody mess, but it's done. That's the bit that's come out. So. Uh, yeah, it's not the neatest of holes, so that's going to need tidying up, get the sharp edges off of it and stuff. But I think now I can just clean up everything, because everything needs cleaning up, basically. That's that's made a hell of a mess. And my drill got very hot, so uh, the drill needs to cool down now. But uh, the old... Uh, the, the, the cutter was falling apart as well by the time you know getting getting through the steel was the hard bit but uh, yeah that's uh, but it's getting there oh right. there is the the hole finally cut in hindsight i wish i kind of masked all the rest of the engine off uh to prevent swarf getting everywhere because it's absolutely plastered with as you can see down the back there and there's like all this stuff I've just cleaned off of the engine. If I if I'd masked it down in the first place, I wouldn't. It would be a lot easier to clean off. But um, that is a tip for you if you're doing this: mask up the engine first, and <laughs> before you start the cutting, because the swarf just flies everywhere. It was over the side panels. It's every all in the engine fins. There's swarf everywhere. I have to get the older. Uh, compressed air gun on it in a bit and blow it all out because it's uh, it is a bit of a mess but um finally got the whole cut that was very traumatic um <laughs> uh, i think that's the bit i've been dreading most about this whole thing really is is, is doing that and possibly the wiring which is going to be <laughs> coming i got um i got a, a, a nice lithium battery there that's it's a quad terminal jobby so that's going to be the the power source for the starter motor and uh it's amazing it's it's i never never experienced a lithium battery before before but it's as light as a feather Com compare that to the equivalent size of a lead acid battery and it's uh, it's amazing really so if you want to do any weight saving get a lithium battery all right i've now assembled the uh the new clutch basket which looks rather splendid there with its sanitizing and uh, and uh, I've uh, mounted the, the this this is like the, the front plate that was off of the uh, the front belt pulley, and uh, I uh, put the the uh, the belt and the uh, clutch basket on simultaneously while just trying to slide it over the front pulley. And um, with the making sure that this 
um, the cog for the starter motor came was inside of the uh, the gearbox cross shaft there and then I uh, drifted I got the with the, the, the back back of me mallet I drifted the uh, the uh, clutch basket into place so that's all like back on there and firm now and there's there's not much clearance there but you see there is clearance between the uh, the gearbox crossover shaft um i was a bit a bit worried about this chain tensioner thing here but the belt does clear that so uh, the chain tensioner won't be used i, I had a word with paul over, over at shrops of classics and it, it won't need any and he said all these uh T140s are different and every time you do one of these you have a different amount of play on the primary drive belt but this one seems okay it's it's nice and not too tight and not too loose there's a bit of little bit of movement in it but not too much so uh that's that's looking pretty good I think and uh so we're getting ready now to um get the clutch center on I think is the, probably the next thing um okay so we'll see where you go from here well this is the new clutch shock absorber assembly that's all uh, looking good and up together and uh there's a new main shock nut and washer that will fix that on so we'll get that on now all right that's the new uh, shock absorber assembly with the uh, three new clutch bolts there um we'll have to make sure those those go in those holes there's the little recesses there for the heads and uh the, we're looking at the back of it now so the heads go in there when you put the bolt through got to do those before you put it on because if you forget you feel a right proper nana there's fairly few youtubers that have done that so uh, <laughs> forgot to put them on and regretted it afterwards they can't pull it all back off again okay all right we'll put those on and uh I'll show it together. Right, that's the shock absorber assembly with the bolts in place. See them poking through the, the bottom there, so it will go on that way round. Okay, there is it. It is the shock absorber assembly in position. Once you line up the splines in there, it actually goes, it slides onto the splines fairly easy. I put a bit of copper slip on there just to prevent it from uh, kind of rusting up in the future you want to get it off um so now the center nut i've got a, a a locking plate to go in there so i can do up the center nut i'll show you that in a minute all right i've got this clutch locking plate which has got clutch splines on both sides so you, you put that in into position in here you find the correct Wait, put it in. Um, I'll, I'll uh, go off the phone and put it in properly. But the inner ones engage on the shock absorber, and the outer ones engage on the clutch basket, and it locks the clutch in position, so you can actually do up the centre nut without anything spinning. So uh, I'll get that in, and then we'll put the centre nut in. See this uh, uh, shaft washer here. It's got a little tab on it, and if you look in here, you probably can't see it. Oh yeah, you can see it there. There's a little, like, uh, gap there in the, in the back of the thing, back of the uh, clutch basket kind of shaft there. That's, uh, that little tab, that little tab should slot into there. So... I'm going to get some uh, copper grease on the threads of the nut. Actually, you might get some thread locker on there, probably. Well, not copper grease, but get some thread locker on there. Right, you see one slight problem here. Uh, you see I've got the got a clutch friction plate in there now. I've got Norman Hyde 7 plate clutch going in. I had to take the Dremel to the inside of these screws because uh, I had to take because they overlapped the uh, clutch basket a little bit where they poked out 
and that just that tiny overlap prevented me from getting the clutch plates in so having done that now they're all uh, they're all ground back a little bit so i can get the get the clutch plate in <laughs> um, uh, and i'm now rebuilding the clutch right uh, that's all me seven clutch plates in i also uh, refitted the uh, clutch push rod Gotta remember to do that, always the clutch won't work. So I got a now, I got some new T120 springs for it because with a seven plate clutch, T120 springs are recommended because uh, the T140 springs are too heavy for it, really. So um, I got a now, find the pressure plate and the cups for the springs and the nuts and stuff. So uh, back in a bit right as you can see i've uh, got the clutch thrust plate in now i haven't got the center adjuster in yet but i'm just getting the the three three springs screws done up um got t120 springs in there a little bit slacker than the t140 springs so i mentioned that before so uh once i got those tightened properly um i shall get the, the center screw in right i've had to strip everything off again because um there was a washer which i shall show you there that washer was in the back of there and i hadn't realized that it was there and it needed to come out um it looked like it was still there on Paul's video, which would confuse me. Um, but I should have taken it off because, as a result, everything was stood out further than it should be. Uh, nothing fitted, and um, also the oil seal had got graunched up as well. So uh, I've actually, uh, I've actually uh, put a little chamfer on the. The corner of that lip there so that it now hopefully will go slide into the oil seal nicely and not grunge it up that's the trouble when you've um, drifted it on you can't actually tell whether you have damaged the oil seal or not because you can't see it so uh, that was one of the little problems but there we go so I've got to put it all back together again I've got got some new oil seals over there new oil seals so uh, now I can hopefully, I've got a spare oil seal just in case I screw it up again. So <laughs> let's see how we go from there. Right, I'll put some red rubber, rubber grease round the lead in for the uh, the front pulley. Oh, that's the oil seal back in, a new oil seal. And I've got also some red rubber grease round there to help the, the lead in from the pulley slip underneath into the oil seal. Right, that's the front pulley back on again. Uh, a little bit of bit of, uh, of thread locker on the back of these Allen screws to keep them in place as well. And hopefully it won't have to come off again. Right, to uh, the next job, I'll uh, I'll uh, fix the stator on. that has got a little Allen key, little um, keyway that goes in there, a little uh, bridge off key that goes in there. So we get the stator on and then uh, try uh, fix the rotor on rather and then uh, try the I've got a new stator to go on there so uh, we, when we get to that I'll show you that. Right that's the new stator that I've got um, that went on good you can see down the back there's there's plenty of clearance between the uh, the flywheel and the back of the stator. The problem I had previously, if I if I show you my old stator, um, that's the old one, but look on the back of it, it's clearly had some rework done on it, and that was sticking up way above the back flat back of the stator, and that was interfering with the front pulley, so I couldn't use that one, unfortunately, so that one's junk. <laughs> But uh, I think it works all right with a with a triplex chain, but with a belt drive, it ain't going to work. So uh, unfortunately, I had to buy a new one. 
after getting all the um, rotor and stator back on, before I do anything else, I'm doing the breather solution. Um, I've taken the there's a there's a big black pipe. Um, this jobby, which went from the there's a breather point on the rocker box, and that that went up inside the the frame to a point inside the frame there, um, and uh, I've got a I've got a I've got to split this one. I might actually just completely replace it. We'll see, and put a T junction in and connect it down to the the banjo that is now. Uh, supplied in the kit that now fits into the space where the uh, tie-in plunger would otherwise have gone. So uh, and there's a little, there's a little blanking screw that went on the the primary case that the that the, uh, the timing plunger would have fitted in. So I've, I've got to take the banjo off now again if I need to do the the timing again. I hopefully will not have to do that, but we'll see. Um, right, that the thread on the thread on that uh, ban banjo connector was very tight in the socket, and it's very very difficult to get it in without cross threading it. So I'm just going to uh, tighten up this little uh, do for now and try and uh, lock the tube on it. I had to use a heat gun on the uh, on the tube because it's very stiff tube. So uh, try and soften it up a bit to get it over the banjo connector. Right. Getting the uh, new primary chain case on, I put the put the new gasket on. A little bit of Hylamar on there. Not that it's going to be leaking any, I hope, because it should be running dry. But uh, so it was supplied with a new gasket, and that's gone on. Uh, new copper washers under the dome nuts on there. I'm going to now go around and put all the the Allen screws in the chain case. There's a shiny new primary chain case all fixed on now. All the screws done up. So uh, next we go over the other side and see about how the starter motor fits on there. Right, unboxing the starter motor for the first time. Um, see what the connections are on here. That's obviously where the uh, the starter switch uh, goes, and these. Uh, I presume are the battery terminals. I haven't had a proper look yet, but there it all is in its glory. So we'll see about fitting it on now. Right, getting the starter motor in position is a bit tricky. Getting it past the old uh, clutch cable was a bit tricky, and the new breather, and I got to make sure I got wires coming out of the the. Uh, I might have to reroute the, the the alternator wires here, so uh, I have to see see what's what. Don't want anything getting trapped underneath it that I can't get to later. Um, these are the holes that the mounting bolts go through. So let's see if we can jiggle it around and get it in a position where I can actually bolt it on. Right, the uh, starter motor is finally attached. What I had to do to get it to line up was um, I had to take the primary chain case off again and uh, put it on loosely and then get the starter motor in position and um, then put the, put this, push, push the primary chain case in until there was a, sort of about eighth of an inch gap around it. Then I could get the starter motor lined up properly and slid into the the little bush in the primary chain case uh, and uh, you can see it all kind of lines up now and uh, then I could actually get the two allen screws that hold the starter motor on engaged in their threads um, once that once they those two allen screws were engaged in their threads then I could actually put the primary chain case on properly and then the starter motor was lined up and, and could be pushed all the way home so it was a bit of a pain really um, but uh, got there in the end it's quite a fiddly process to get it all lined up there's a, a strange noise now when I turn the engine over 
um, you can hear something um, in the starter motor engaging in there like it's not supposed to at the moment I don't think but uh, something's a bit weird but we'll find out now I've got to figure out what terminals are what on the solenoid what needs to go to the battery and and etc now the breather pipe I've run um, it comes out cleanly underneath the solenoid and it goes up between the carbs uh, across the top of the engine and um, I'm going to cut it about there I think because uh, and then I get the T piece on it and the pipe can go down to that the uh, rocker box breather and another, another pipe will go up to the lug on the on the frame okay right um, I've connected the starter motor to the battery this is the wire that this terminal of the solenoid goes to the the positive terminal of the battery and I've, I've rooted it basically under the front of the seat because that's the biggest space I've got the wires unfortunately a bit shorter than I would like you can see over the back there the negative terminal from the battery I've I've connected to the uh, starter motor mounting uh, bolt so it's got a good connection to the, the battery uh, good, good connection to the chassis of the starter motor so, so that's where its field winders gets its energy from right I have now the wire from the solenoid and if I just short that across to the positive of the battery we'll see and it spins so we're in business that's good I think that's a good start and uh, I need to connect the solenoid wire now to the to the starter button and we should be good to go um, that's how I've connected the battery anyway so uh, negative terminals are this end and the positive terminals are that end so the starter motor wires have had to cross over it's just because of the all the other stuff that I've got connected to, particularly to the negative terminal of the battery the wires aren't long enough to stretch so that's why I was hoping the starter motor wires would be a bit longer but they're not unfortunately it's, so they've got to just go the shortest route possible really so but that's my um, lithium ion battery there um, so it's going to have a bit of oomph to turn the thing over right the breather pipe which uh, I showed you the banjo for it earlier underneath the solenoid there comes up between the carbs over the top of the engine I've now fitted the T-piece to it there uh, one branch comes down into the into the uh, rocker uh, cover breather there I'll show you the uh, the other bit I'll go to the other side in a minute and the other the other side of the uh, the breather comes out goes there and there's a, a little spigot on the frame there that that goes to okay right uh, just tidying this side up now I've got the footrest back on I've got the gear change lever back on put the plugs in and I'll, I'll try it turning it over in a minute and make sure it turns over with the plugs in all right it's uh, all done and uh, I've got it all wired up. I hope I've got the uh, alternator wires right, but I think there's only one, you know, they're, they're all the same, they're all AC and it has to go into the rectifier, so it doesn't matter really which one is what, but uh, I think I've got the colours colours matched up on those. and. Uh, Got the uh, starter switch on the handlebar there, and that's kind of plumbed into the. I've got a 20 amp fuse in there. It goes via the 20 amp fuse, round, down, and away. switch it on. <coughs> you'll see that. Uh, 
it goes so uh, I think that's a result we will, so we'll uh, get the petrol tank on and see if we can get it fired up next time I see you right here we are in the garage again and the tanks back on so we'll turn the fuel on both sides just to make sure it's getting some fuel in there right fuel is on turn, turn the ignition on make sure we got that.